Because if you haven't, don't put salvation off till tomorrow. Don't put salvation off till tomorrow. And for all the Christian parents out here, if you call yourself a Christian, friends, I ask you to examine the fruits of Disney. I have a sermon on me right now if you're want, willing to check it out. I will give it to you. It is a DVD sermon exposing the unfruitful works of Disney. The wickedness that is behind Disney. The wickedness in Disney's lyrics. The wickedness that Disney promotes. The magic. The witchcraft. All these things that God says are an abomination to Him. God says that those that consult with familiar spirits, those that consult with wizards, those that practice divination, those that practice witchcraft, those that, cons those that practice necromancy, the Word of God says that these are an abomination to Him. God hates it with a passion, friends. And that's why we need to examine, and we need to examine in the Word of God and see what God hates and see what God loves. All you ever get anymore are sermons talking about God's love, God's love, God's love. Well, see, the fact that God loves also means that God hates. That means that God also hates. And when God calls something an abomination, that means He hates it. That's right. That means God, He hates sodomy because He calls it an abomination. That means God hates witchcraft because he calls it an abomination. God says that those, those things, he says that that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So anything that's esteemed highly among men, no matter what it is, whether it's your Disney, whether it's your Hollywood, whether it's your wicked music industry, whatever it is, NFL, NHL, NBA, you name it, television, you name it. Anything that is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. And that's why we have to examine the Word of God. We have to meditate upon His Word day and night. We have to meditate upon the Word of God day and night, friends, to see what God hates, to see what God loves. See, everybody wants to talk about God is love, God is love. That's not the only attribute of God. God has several attributes. God is sovereign. God is merciful. God is just. God is also wrath. That's right. God also hates. That's right. And what does God hate? God hates all workers of iniquity. That's what it says in the book of Psalms. God hates all workers of iniquity. It says that God also hates pride. The Word of God says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Hallelujah. God says that He hates pride. He hates every evil way. He hates those that bear false witness. He hates those that shed the blood. The, he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Like for instance, those that commit those that commit abortion. God hates that. God hates it. God hates those that shed the that shed the blood of the innocent. And that's why we have to examine the Word of God. We have to meditate upon His Word day and night, so we can know exactly who God is. So we can know all the attributes of God. That's right. See, everybody knows John 3.16. That God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He sent His only begotten Son into the world. That whoever so believeth in Him, that they should not perish but have everlasting life. Everybody knows John 3.16. But do you, do you know Proverbs 8.13? What talks about God hating, He hates pride. He hates every evil way and every false way. Do you know that scripture? Do you know the scripture that says that, that sodomy is an abomination to God? Do you know that scripture? Do you know the scripture that says God, He hates, He hates those that practice magic and witchcraft? And see, unfortunately, friends, unfortunately, that's what Disney promotes. Disney promotes magic. They promote witchcraft. I know this lady laughs, but it's true. It's, a, it's in every single, almost every single Disney movie is about magic and witchcraft. And see, the Word of God says that those that do that, those that do that is an abomination to Him. God, He doesn't take that lightly, friends. He doesn't take it lightly. He says that rebellion and disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. And that's what Disney promotes. They promote rebellion. Almost every single show Disney has had, it's always got rebellious teenagers and children on it. Whether it was The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, whether it was That's So Raven, oh, what else? 
What are some other Disney shows? All those little different Disney shows. The uh, Wizards of Wa Waverly Place. Kids enjoy the show. That that promotes that promotes witchcraft. That promotes magic. See, God hates it. And that's why we need to be aware of these things, parents. We need to be aware of these things. We need to be aware of what God hates and what God loves. See, we know we know the scriptures that say God is love. We know those scriptures. But do you know the scriptures where it says that these things are an abomination to God? Those that consult with familiar spirits. Those that practice divination. Those that practice necromancy and witchcraft. And that, that, that consult with wizards. These things are an abomination to God. And that's why we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware of this, friends. We need to be aware of this, friends. So that way we're not bringing cursed objects into our home. That's right. You should check the toys that you're giving your children. Because guarantee you, guarantee you most of these toys, all the Disney stuff, every last thing of Disney is a cursed object. God hates it, friends. And when you bring it in your home, you're bringing the curse into your home. And I know many Christians will say, well, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Don't make that blood null and void by bringing cursed objects into your home. Look at the Israelites. When Achan brought a cursed object into the camp, when he brought that cursed object into the camp, many Israelites were slain that day. And why is that? Because when you bring cursed objects into your home, when you bring cursed objects into the camp, when you bring cursed objects into your vehicle, you place a curse upon yourself. See, Satan himself can't curse you, but you can curse yourself. Witches can't curse you, but you can curse yourself if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you can definitely curse yourself. And that's why we need, we need to examine the movies. We need to examine the movies we let our children watch. We need to examine the programming that we let our children watch. Whether it's on Disney, whether it's on Nickelodeon, it doesn't matter what the program is, friends. We need to let our children, we need to, we need to examine this before we allow our children to watch it. I remember one time, I remember one time that my little nephew was watching Disney Junior and they had a little intermission but between shows. And in this intermission, the, the, the lions from Lion King were doing stretches, but these stretches were actually yoga poses. And yoga is witchcraft. Every different pose in yoga, every different pose in yoga is giving honor and homage, paying homage to a false god, a false Hindu god. And this is what Nick, or this is what Disney Junior was promoting. They were promoting the young children to do yoga. That's right. Three, four, five, six years old to promote them to do yoga. But they were doing it under the guise of stretching. Under the guise of stretching. See, this is how subtle the devil is. This is how deceptive the devil is. He's not going to come out with a, red, with, a, with, a red, with a red outfit on and a pitchfork and say, Hey, everybody, I'm the devil. I'm here to deceive you. No, he's going to use subtlety. He's going to use it. He's going to do it in a subtle, deceptive manner. Because this is how the devil, this is how Satan has always operated. He's never changed his tactics. The same tactics he used in the garden is the same tactics he's using now, friends. And he's doing it, family. He's doing it, friends, with the birthdays, with the Christmas celebrations. Hey, you got to get your children the newest and greatest and latest toys. You got to get them this idol. You got to get them that idol. When you do, when you do a definition search in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, the word doll, D-O-L-L, it means idol. That's right. So and essentially when you're bringing dolls into your home, you're bringing idols into your home. You're bringing idolatry into your home. And unfortunately, children are committing idolatry with these toys and they don't even know it. Parents even do it. That's why you got grown women collecting Barbies. You got grown women collecting little little figurines and little miniature figurines and little precious moment dolls. It's idolatry. That's right. And see, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is what is promoted to children. But that's why somebody needs to come out here and sound the alarm, parents. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. That is what the watchman on the wall does. He sounds the alarm. He sounds the alarm, parents. 
That's why you need to look at these matters for yourselves. I know you have busy schedules. I know you're really busy. A lot of families have both parents working. And unfortunately, that's not the Lord's best for you. But see, with that being said, that's why we need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to examine these things. We need to test the spirits and try the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. That's right. We need to try the spirits. We need to try everything that we set in our children in, in front of our children's eyes. Whether it's Disney, whether it's Nickelodeon, whatever kind of movie it is through Hollywood, we need to try these spirits. We shouldn't just trust Disney. We shouldn't trust that Disney's going to have our children's best interest. We should not trust Disney with our children. No, we should not. We should not trust Nickelodeon and think they're going to have our children's best interest. No, they're not. And why is that? Because they promote magic. They promote witchcraft. They promote sodomy. They promote rebellion and disobedience. They promote witchcraft. They promote all of this. That's right. See, the, the, the devils get fired up when you preach the Word of God. They hate the Word of God being preached. Glory to God. That's right. They hate the Word of God. The devils hate the Word of God. Well, see, this is no big thing. See, the Word of God says in the book of Matthew 13, hallelujah, in the parable of the sower, we're going to give you a little parable, friends, just to show you what's going on out here today. And this is Jesus. And he spoke, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And see, that's what I'm doing today, friends. I'm sowing seeds. You don't have to, you don't have to take the seeds if you don't want to. But I'm going to sow seeds regardless. So a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So not everybody's going to have ears to hear this word that I'm preaching. But guess what? For those that do have ears to hear, let him hear. Because not everybody's going to want to hear. So in the word of God says, the disciples came to Jesus and they wanted to know what this parable was all about. And the Word of God says, Hear ye the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, talking about the kingdom of God, not the magical kingdom, not, not Disney's magical kingdom, but the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, hallelujah. So when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he, hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. So, when those, when they're not established in the word of God, when they're not rooted in Jesus Christ, when trials and tribulations come, because of the Word of God being preached, they will be offended. They will hate the Word of God. And see, we're living in the so-called Bible Belt, but unfortunately this belt is very loose. This belt in the Bible Belt is very, very loose. So we need to get tightened up down here. We need to get tightened up on the Word of God. We need to get tightened up on our Scriptures. We need to meditate upon our Word day and night. And this is why. Because it says... Once again, yet hath he not rooted himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because of the word, because of the word, because of the word of God, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world. So they hear the word and they hear the cares of this world. They hear the word of God being preached and then they go inside and they hear the Disney. They hear their Disney. And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. But he that receives seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Hallelujah. 
That's right, friends. So there's different hearts. That's what the that's what this represents. The the ground, as it talks about in the parable, of the sower, it represents the heart of a person. Some people they have stony hearts. That means they have a heart in the heart. And it needs to be, that heart and heart, it needs to be broken up. The Word of God says, break up the fallow ground. Break up the fallow ground and sow into yourselves righteousness. So we're out here today to break up that fallow ground. How do you break up that fallow ground of someone's heart? You preach the law to them. The Word of God says you give the law to the proud and you give grace to the humble. So guess what? Naturally, we preach the law, but when somebody comes up and has a genuine, honest conversation, then we'll preach grace to them. We'll give them grace all day. But when somebody's being proud and arrogant, you preach the law to them all day. Because the law is the schoolmaster to bring people to Christ. Hallelujah. That's right. You don't, you don't waste grace. You don't waste grace on people who don't want grace. you got to give them the law. you got to give the proud the law. Hallelujah. And why is that? Because God hates pride. The Word of God says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That's right. The Word of God also says in the book of Proverbs, this is how God feels about pride. This is why we have to humble ourselves under the hand of the Lord. When we humble, when we humble ourselves under the hand of the Lord and swallow our pride, God will exalt us. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, everyone that is proud in heart, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. And see, that's what we've been talking about. That's what we've been talking about out here today. We've been talking about those things which are an abomination to God. The Word of God says that that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The Word of God says that those that practice witchcraft and magic and divination is an abomination to God. And see, we see Disney, that's what they represent. That's what Disney promotes. They promote magic. That's why it's called the magical kingdom. The magic kingdom, right? Are we, are we concerned about the magical kingdom or are we concerned about God's kingdom? The magical kingdom or the kingdom of God, friends? What are we concerned about? What are we meditating upon about? The Word of God says, train your children up in the ways that they should go, and when they grow older, they will not depart from it. So when we train our children up in the ways, and the fear, and the admonition of the Lord, and His statutes, and His commandments, and His judgments, and His law, and His word, and His teachings, and his precepts, when you train your children up in these things, they will not depart from it. But when you train your children up in Disney, and magic, and witchcraft, and the things of the world, they're not going to want to have anything to do with God as they grow older. No, many of them are going to become atheists. Many children will become atheists. Many of them will get into the anime scene and the sci-fi scene and become atheists. And why is that? It's because it's because of double-mindedness, friends. That's right. It's because of double-mindedness. When you're double-minded, when you're when when you're double-minded around your children, when you're double-minded around your children, guess what happens, friends? They see that double-mindedness, and they think it's okay. They think that's what the normal is, and so then they too will be double-minded. They too will be double-minded. That means they'll no longer want to have anything to do with the Word of God. They'll no longer want to go to church. They'll no longer want to read their Bible. That's why the Word of God says you cannot serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and you'll love the other. Either you'll despise the one and cling to the other. The Word of God says you cannot serve God and mammon. The Word of God says choose this day whom you will serve. We have to choose either the Lord or the things of the world. We have to choose the Lord or we have to choose Baal. The Word of God says, how long halt ye between two opinions? If, if your Lord be God, then serve Him. But if it be Baal, then serve Him. But we can't serve both, friends. We can't serve Disney and serve God. We can't serve Hollywood and serve God. We can't. It's not God's best for us, friends. It's not. I know you shake your head, but it's true, friend. It's true. Disney promotes magic and witchcraft. And what does the Word of God say about magic and witchcraft? I'm not going to give you my words. I'll just give you the Word of God. 
Because God says that those things are an abomination to him. God says that those that do such things, those that practice such things are an abomination to him. Now when God says something is an abomination, that means he that means he despises it. That means he detests it. That means he abhors it. That means he hates it. We should not want to be hated by God. Not at all. That's not God's best for us, friends. That is not God's best for us. His best for us is to fear Him. His best for us is to put our faith and trust in Him. And to not sell our children out. To not, to not, to not, to not sacrifice our children on the altar of Molech. Because that's what happened in the Old Testament. And that's what's happening today. To not pass our children through the fire. You know, I, I present that to you today. Are you passing your children through the fire? And I'm talking about a spiritual fire. Clearly you're not doing it through a physical fire, but through a spiritual fire. Are you passing your children through that fire? See, see friends, you need to be made aware of these things. You need to be made aware of these things. Somebody has to make you aware of these things. Somebody has to make you aware of the unfruitful works of darkness. The unfruitful works of Disney. That's right. That's right. Disney's works are very unfruitful. Let me let me read you some lyrics to a Disney song, and we'll see, we'll see if this if this represents God's best or not. And this is from the movie Aladdin. It's called A Whole New World. A whole new world. I can show you the world. It says, I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? See, the Word of God says that the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things who can know it. So you shouldn't let your own heart decide, but see, this is what Disney promotes. I can open your eyes. Aladdin is telling the princess that he can open her eyes. That reminds me of Genesis 3, when the serpent tells Eve that when she takes of this fruit, that her eyes will be opened and she will be like gods. That her and Adam will be like gods. So he says, I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder. Wonder by wonder. The Word of God tells us that the Antichrist, the beast, through many signs, through many signs and lying wonders, he's going to deceive people. And everyone's being slowly prepped for that now. It's like the old uh, proverbial frog in a, in a boiling pot. You know, if you throw that, if you throw that frog in that pot while it's already boiling, he's going to jump out. But if you throw that, if you throw, if you throw that frog in that pot and slowly turn up the heat, slowly, 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 he's got, he's not going to notice that he's being cooked. And see, that's what's happening in this world today, Satan with his subtlety. People are not knowing that they're being slowly but surely prepped to accept the mark of the beast in the spirit of their mind. So, Aladdin goes on and he sings to her. I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under, on a magic carpet ride. Now, I remember there was a song, I think it was, what, what was it, like in the 60s or 70s, called The Magic Carpet Ride, and that was all talking about doing drugs. But this is what Disney's promoting. And he says, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. So what does that mean? Well, no longer that point of view of the Lord. I'm going to show you a new point of view. This is exactly what the serpent did to Eve in the garden. He wanted to show her a new point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. So in other words, no rules, no one to submit to, no commandments to obey or follow. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with you. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Unbelievable sights, indescribable feeling, soaring, tumbling, freewheeling, through an endless diamond sky, a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. 
a hundred thousand things to see. Hold your breath, it gets better. I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far, I can't go back to where I used to be. He said I'm like a shooting star and I can't go back for where I used to be. This is Lucifer, but yeah, this is Aladdin. But this is actually Lucifer talking. This is Lucifer through these lyrics talking. He said, I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far, I can't go back to where I used to be. That's right, because of his pride, Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. And as that shooting star, he fell out of heaven and he can't return there. But this is the lyrics to a whole new world from Disney, from Aladdin. So it says, I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far, I can't go back to where I used to be. A whole new world, every turn a surprise, with new horizons to pursue. Every moment, red letter. Well, we carry a red letter Bible, hallelujah. I'll chase them anywhere. There's time to spare. Let me share this whole new world with you. A whole new world, a whole new world. That's where we'll be, that's where we'll be. A thrilling chase, a wonderful place for you and for me. A whole new world. And what is he talking about, that whole new world? He's talking about a new world order. He's talking about that beast system. That's right, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, Lucifer incarnated, he's gonna have all religions come together as one. All religions come together as one. A whole new world, a new world order. A one world government, a one world religion with a one world currency. A whole new world. And that shooting star, he can't return to heaven. Lucifer can't return to heaven. And why is that? Because he tried to usurp God's authority. That's the same thing the serpent did in the garden. And, and we see, we see here in this song, a whole new world. In the movie Aladdin. Which is basically about a thief, a robber. Who, who swindles a young lady into disobeying her parents. That's right. He coerces, he seduces, he seduces this young lady to disobey her parents, to take of this forbidden fruit. So Aladdin, the movie Aladdin, is a perfect picture example of Lucifer in the garden as a serpent deceiving Eve to take that fruit. And that's what Disney offers everybody. That's what Disney offers everybody. They offer that fruit. They offer them that fruit. That same fruit that Lucifer offered Eve and Adam in the garden. A whole new world. He told her, I can open your eyes. Well, see, that's funny. Because the serpent told Eve in the garden, when you take of this fruit, your eyes will be open and you'll be like gods, knowing good and evil. And see, let me go back to the movie Aladdin for a second. So we have a rebellious, thieving, lying robber who seduces a young lady to disobey her father and he gets her to accept this forbidden fruit all the while he's operating with the help of a jinn or a genie and as a jinn as a genie is known in Islam is a devil a genie is a jinn in Islam and they know these jinns as devils so Aladdin is consulting with a familiar spirit he's consulting with a devil to get these magical wishes, three wishes. And this is basically the main plot. This is the main crux behind the movie Aladdin. And yet, we watch this and we sit under this and we act like it's okay. We act like this is normal. And little do we know, little do we know that through watching this programming, and it's funny because television shows, movies, it's called programming. And why is that? Because it's reprogramming. It's rewiring your mind. Just like pornography does. It rewires your mind. And through this rewiring of your mind, these children, these children are having their minds altered. Whether parents realize it or not, it's subconsciously happening. And that's the serpent's goal. That is the serpent's goal, is to rewire your mind. To, to push you away from the things of God and push you towards the things of the beast. To push you towards the things of Lucifer. To push you towards the things of Satan. So you can practice magic. So you can partake in magic and witchcraft and think it's okay. 
But see, somebody has to come out here and warn the parents. You know, I know this isn't the popular thing to do, and I really don't care. It really wasn't popular in Jesus' day when he was going out preaching the gospel. And guess what? His hard preaching is what got him crucified. John the Baptist, his hard preaching is what got him beheaded. Peter the Apostle, his hard preaching is what got him crucified upside down. James, the brother of our Lord, his hard preaching is what got him, what got him martyred. Paul, the Apostle Paul, his hard preaching is what got him martyred and stoned to death. The preaching of Stephen, his hard preaching is what got him murdered and stoned to death. And that's why we come out here, parents, because somebody needs to warn you about these things. Somebody needs to warn you of the witchcraft and the magic and the wicked influence that Disney has had on the entire culture of America. And we see Disney's buying everything. Disney owns ESPN. Disney now owns most superheroes, like X-Men and, and uh, who else? I don't know if they own, I think they own Spider-Man too. All the Marvel comics, Disney owns them. They own Star Wars. I haven't even got into the witchcraft that's behind Star Wars yet. That's right. The witchcraft that is behind Star Wars. The Force. The Force. How about the hybridization? How about these half-men, half-aliens half with the X-Men? Or with Superman, with Superman's DC Comics? But still, the same thing. It's still the same thing. And see, unfortunately, though, unfortunately, we sit our children up under this like it's normal. And I know many parents, many parents, they don't have the time to investigate these things. But, but parents, I implore you, investigate these things for yourself. Investigate it for yourself, and you'll see I'm not lying to you.